Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG Build Guide Edition. Today I'm ready to drop on you my new and improved Holy Smiter Paladin. And as always, this build from a raw damage output does more damage than any build I've ever made. And it is really, really fast, which I will showcase in a few seconds. As always, we will look at gameplay, skills, passives, gear, and of course, break down the character sheet. Everything is timestamped in the description below if you need to bounce around. Let's not waste any time and jump right into this. Starting off with some gameplay, and this is gonna be a nice long run. Now the skills we're gonna be using are Lunge, Sigils of Hope, Javelin, Holy Aura, and Smite. Now we are using the Devotion Amulet, and this gives us so much power for this build. Like I said earlier, as far as kind of speed and overall damage wise, there's nothing that touches this. Now, as you can see my mana going up, I'm gonna show you this. Current Smite Tooltip DPS is 257. As this continues to go up, you will see damage go down. Now it's at 237. As it continues to go up, now it's at 222, and it'll continue to get lower and lower. Inversely related, as you use mana, and your mana goes down and I down, do and I'll that. try and get it to zero. I cannot do that. Almost there. I cannot do that. 428,000 on tooltip for smite. Crazy damage, but of course that's one mana is pretty much at zero. So let's bounce around and I'll show you how to use this. So lunge is going to make smites. And of course you have two charges of lunge and they come back pretty quick. Oh, we found a singularity. On top of that, I'll, sh I'll throw Javelin right now. I'm not doing anything right now. The Javelin is doing all the killing. Just moving around and Javelin is casting smites. So Lunge and Javelin make them and then you manually cast them. On top of that, Sigils of Hope are on instant cast. So it's easy for you to keep your mana low and get the buffs from Sigils. And as you can see, you just bounce around. We're gonna chase down all these little mini bosses. You can see the modifiers on the right. Obviously this is empowered content, corruption level 165. So it's not like we're doing, you know, super easy content. And we are just melting everything. And since we are a paladin, this build is also gonna give tons of survivability. After this, we'll fight a Shade of Oribus. Should go pretty well. Let's take this route. Give me my idols. Let's keep going. Actually, let's go up. Well, this will be a nice long run. Ridiculous. Let's go fight a Shade of Oribus. Now, instead of fighting the Shade of Oribus, I thought, why not fight the Emperor of Corpses because we were ready for this fight. Again, Corruption 165, empowered content. I cannot do The only it. thing we're gonna suck at is being able to get outside of the circle. At least we could hit him. Far so good. Half life. I can not do that. Quarter life. He used to be the hardest boss in the game. Let me show you how to recreate this build. 
So let's check out the skills for this build, starting with Lunge. And again, I love Lunge so much. You get two charges of it, it creates Smite, and it's easy to just pop around the map. The way you want to use Smite is one into Warrior's Renewal, one into Ambuscade, one into Double Strike, two into Initiate's Onslaught, three into Coal of the Weak, four into Holy Incursion. This is what gives you a 100% chance to create Smites. You want two into Disarming Blow and five into Dawn Charge. That is Lunge. Moving over to Javelin, another skill that will create Smites for you. And I was using this skill the whole time when I was fighting the Emperor of Corpses because it was helping keeping all the enemies off me. You want one into Mighty Deliverer, one into Burning Strength, one into Siege Barrage, one into Battle Standard. This is what makes it is when you throw Javelin, it goes in the air, lands, and then everything in that area is going to get hit with Smite and it is going to heal you. And if you throw it on top of a boss or a big enemy, it'll actually carry the battle standard, the flag with them, so they cannot escape the smite. Five into Banner of Restoration, four into Symbol, one into Capture the Flag, one into Divine Intervention, and five into Righteous Descent. Moving over to Holy Aura. This is one I always change up every once in a while, but I like it in its current iteration. I went up and took the actual Ignite chance instead of the physical damage, because we never do any physical. Rather have the Ignite. So you want two into Devotion, two into Fantasism, three into True Strike, three into Extreme Zeal, three into Shelter of the Storm, four into Mighty Shield, two into Vital Boon, and one into Purification. This is going to give you more, more poison resistance, but really it cleanses ailments whenever you want to activate it. And as far as Shelter from the Storm and Mighty Shield, you can move these points around. You might need extra Endurance and Elemental Resistance, so you could put five here and then two there. If your resistances and endurance are good, then you could roll it this way, completely up to you. Moving over to Sigils of Hope. This is how you keep your mana down, your main mana spender. Okay, and again, it is an instant cast. You want five into Iron Sigils, four into Enduring Hope, one into Tetragram, one into Meditation, five into Empowering Sigils, one into Last Wish, two into Word of the Alcriti, and one into Exgeniacy. And this is what's going to make it an instant cast, okay? You're going to be using this skill literally all the time. And a lot of people use like the Numlock trick and put it on instant cast. I don't like it that way. I won't do it. I just manually cast it when I need it. Last but not least, the main damage dealer, Smite. It's unfortunate that the best in slot relic where you can get plus to level on smite is a unique. So you're always going to be sitting on 20 points if you have the gear. The way you want to use smite is two into blinding flash, two into Petey, petty, one into order of Lagan, one into unbalanced scale. This is what turns your smite from fire to lightning. You want five into sacrifice, five into attunement and four into conviction. And again, I wish I had more points to put into this. 20 is all we got. That is the skills. Now let's check out the passives for this build and my character is level 99. We are very close, about four boxes away from level 100. Almost there. You want eight boxes into Fearless, one into Gladiator, five into Armor Clad, five into Valent Charge, two into Aegis Renewal, four into Time and Faith, and 10 into Male Crusher. This is going to give you mana back when you use Smite, but you don't, you kind of got to find that fine tune. If you find yourself always with too much mana, you want to scale it up a, or down a little bit. If you find yourself always running out, you want to scale it up. For my build, I like it at four. It's something you can fine tune. And then, like I said, 10 into male pressure. We're putting nothing into Forge Guard and Void Knight is last. OK, so then we're going to move over to Paladin. You want eight into Conviction, eight into Defiance, one into Honor, 10 into Heaven Fire, eight into Sanctuary Guardian, 10 into Holy Precision, 12 into Duality and 12 into Light of Raya. And then last eight points, and this is what I've been leveling on my last eight skills, is Devouring Blade. And this is you deal increased damage if you have killed an enemy recently and it lasts eight seconds. Obviously, you are directly casting Smite, so you are killing enemies all the time. And that extra 80, hopefully 100% to damage is really, really nice. Those are the passives. Moving over to everyone's favorite gear, starting with idols. And remember, I have the advanced loot filter and advanced build planner in the description below. So if you want to see true, true end game gear, if I could make it happen, it is in there. OK, but I'm going to show you what I'm using right now to be able to push all content in the game. When it comes to idols, you want to find this idol or actually any idol that gives increased damage to smite. 
Okay, you can find one that gives to life, you can find one that gives block effectiveness, but that is basically what you are looking for, and you'll notice that I have four idols that all give to smite damage. The rest I just filled in with little things that I needed as far as health, extra mana, lightning resistance, more health, elemental resistance, but that is what you're looking for, life and smite, or life and block effectiveness. Okay, moving over to the gear. There's only one item required, and I do want to be honest, there's one item required for this build. If you don't have it, it is not going to be even close to as good, and that is the Devotion Amulet. This is a newer amulet, I believe it came on 084, and it is so good. This is what gives us so much of that damage. Plus one adaptive spell damage per smite per five missing mana. That's why you want a maximum amount of mana, and you want it to be as low as humanly possible. Increase cast speed per spell smite with 2% missing mana. Again, you are also, also going to cast so fast with this amulet. And it also gives you lightning damage, and it gives you lightning penetration, and it gives you endurance. It's really, really good. So you need to find a devotion amulet. Without exaggeration, I've probably found 20 of them. So it's not something that is super crazy to find, and all of those 20, I never found any with legendary potential, which sucks, but that's okay. Another best in slot is the Bastion of Honor Shield. You do need a shield for this build because in the passive tree you get so many bonuses to damage if you are holding a shield. And as of right now, Bastion of Honor is the best because it gives you that 100% block chance to nearby enemies and it has a mana roll on it. Okay. The other unique I am using is Storm Carved Testament. This is going to give you tons of lightning damage. It is also going to give you mana and it is going to summon a Storm Totem. Now, obviously, this is not a minion build. But what that Storm Totem is going to do is it's going to pull threat to enemies to a fight the totem, and it's going to be penetrating armor as far as lightning, which is awesome because that also supports your smite. So if you have a Storm Carved Testament, if you have a Bastion of Honor, and if you have a Devotion Amulet, that is what you want. Now, as far as my weapons goes, I'm also using a, a Claim right now, which is a really good lightning scepter. And this, you don't have to use this weapon, okay? I use it because I was able to get a tier seven rolled, almost perfect increase cast speed on it, okay? That is why I use this item. It is good. So if you have one, it's a really easy common item that you find. Again, I've probably found a thousand of them, but the fact that I was able to get that tier seven cast speed to roll on it, it just makes it that much sweeter. That is why when I'm firing, I could cast so fast. And again, the, the least amount of mana you have, the faster your cast speed. So you will notice that my cast speed just gets quicker and quicker. And I guess we'll just quickly do the training dummy right now, since I'm already here showcasing cast speed. So take a look at the damage. It's pretty crazy damage. 185, 199. I saw 199. We ran out of mana. It's really good. Okay, the rest of my gear. Helmet. Mana, mana. Armor. Mana, vitality, health. Ring. Lightning damage. Belt. Lightning damage. I needed the crit avoidance and hybrid health. Ring, lightning damage, spell damage. Boots, vitality, movement, speed, life. And gloves, mana, cast speed. That is the gear. Now let's check out the character sheet. Like I said, my character is level 99. I've got 15 points into attunement, 33 into vitality, movement speed 45. My resistances are all maxed with the exception of cold and void. But when I activate holy aura, all of them are super max, so I just need to move a few around to get to that last 40% we need on Void. As far as survivability, it's got good armor, it's got 100% block chance, like you saw, almost maxed resistances. On top of that, I've almost got max endurance, only missing 1%, almost max critical strike avoidance. You can definitely take a hit with this build. Works really well. When it comes to damage, right now we're 564% to lightning damage. But remember, that gives you that huge boost when you have your mana down. On top of that, spell critical strike chance is 21% and critical strike multiplier is 247. Now that 21% might as well be 100% because inside of smite, you have the 8% increase boost to smite as far as crit chance. 
So that's why when you come over there, you crit almost every single time. It has a couple times you won't, but for the most part, you will always crit. That is the character sheet. Last but not least, let's talk about leveling recommendations for this build. So if you were level one and you wanted to take it all the way to 99 and recreate this Holy Smiter, this is what you want to do. There's only a couple skills you will need to beat the campaign and get into the monolith, and then you could switch over into this build. You need Rive, Shield Rush, around level 25 when you unlock Paladin, you will get Holy Aura, and then after that, I would take Sigils of Hope. But really, once you have Rive and Shield Rush, you can literally finish the entire campaign with just those two skills. Inside of Rive, you have this node right here, Focus Strike. This makes it where your third swing always crits. So through the campaign, this is the first skill you want to take, you want to focus on Crit Multiplier. Then you come over here and you take this, Coupe de Grace. This is gonna give you critical or er, kill threshold of 15%. So you're gonna have a guaranteed crit and kill threshold of 15%. This allows you to fly through the campaign with this build. On top of that, Shield Rush does not require an enemy, so you can just run as far as you can until you hit a wall. And if you don't have a shield, it doesn't matter because you could take this node right here, Dark Rush, where it no longer requires a shield. So that is what I would do. Now, if you already have weapons for it, that is great. Go dual wield and you have all your different stuff in here. And as you level up, so you could take your Humming Bee at level six. And then you can move over to Taste of Blood at level 13, and you can keep going down and grabbing the next updated weapon as you level up. If you do not have weapons already and you are a new player, no big deal. What you can do is to go to lastepochtools.com. It's linked in the description, and you can go to weapons, and it'll show you when the next tier of weapons unlock. But if you want to level up, it's so easy. Trust me on this. Rive, Shield Rush, then Holy Aura, then Sigils of Hope. But the big two for Rive is right here, Focus Strike and Coupe de Grace. It works. All right, everyone, that's the build guide. What do you think of my new and improved Holy Smiter Paladin? Did I miss something? Can I push this to the next level? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Two asks at the end of this video. Ask number one, I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. I'm hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. It really does help the channel move forward. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 42 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. We have a weekly podcast, weekly blog post, access to the VIP lounge, special title in the Discord, and lots of other goodies based upon which tier you sign up at. All the likes, shares, comments, everything is amazing. I truly need all that. But if you want to take it one step further and support me financially, first link in the description. That's all I've got. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron, out. <laughs>